Welcome back to Rogue Darkness, the podcast that uncovers how the misinterpretations and misinformation surrounding witchcraft, the occult, and other beliefs have led many to do unthinkable crimes. From ritualistic killings and the demons that live in all of us, to exploration of the macabre and delving deep into the unknown, let's explore the darkness of mankind one crime at a time. I'm your host of The Grim and Gruesome, Raven. Let's go rogue and get right into today's chilling crime. The case of a twisted killer, the vampire of Barcelona, none other than Enriqueta Marti. Today, we'll be exploring the story of Enriqueta Marti, the Spanish serial killer from Barcelona, whose crimes were so heinous and depraved that they still continue to haunt the city of Barcelona to this day. This episode will contain graphic depictions of the events that occurred during Enriqueta's horrific killing spree, including child abduction and kidnapping, entrapment, prostitution, body dismemberment and mutilation, pedophilia, child sacrifice, and the use of perceived black magic. Listener discretion is strongly advised. Enriqueta's life was full of contradictions. On one hand, she was a beggar, dressed in rags and wandering the streets of desolate parts of the town. While on the other hand, she was a wealthy procurer of children, offering her services to the elite members of Barcelona society. So now, let's go back in time and start off from the very beginning. Enriqueta Marti was born in Tarragona, Spain, in 1868. She was abandoned by her parents as a child and would go on to grow up in extreme poverty. These poor conditions that she grew up in would ultimately lead her to a life of prostitution. She moved to Barcelona in the early 20th century and set up a brothel in the Raval district, a notorious area known for its crime and poverty. In 1895, Enriqueta married a painter named Jean Pujalo, but their marriage was doomed to fail. Pujalo cited Enriqueta's numerous affairs with other men, her seemingly unpredictable character, and her frequent visits to houses of ill repute as the ultimate reasonings for their separation. Despite the separation, though, Enriqueta continued to frequent these establishments and engage in prostitution. But that was just the tip of the iceberg. Enriqueta's true horror lie in her double life as a child killer and witch doctor. She selected abandoned children, taking them by the hand and passing them off as her own during the day, but when night fell, she would go on to either prostitute the children or murder them. She would lure the children into her brothel with promises of food and shelter and then would subject them to unspeakable acts of torture and abuse. She didn't need to beg for money, as her double life as a procurer and prostitute gave her all the money she needed to live a comfortable life. Enriqueta was a master manipulator who preyed on the most vulnerable members of society, most commonly children. Enriqueta's notoriety grew in 1909 during what was known as the Tragic Week, when she was arrested for running a brothel that offered sexual services to children as young as three years old. With her arrest, a young man from a wealthy family was also taken into custody. However, her high connections in Barcelona society allowed her to avoid trial, and her brothel was lost in the judicial and bureaucratic system. As horrifying as all of this information is, Enriqueta's horror did not stop there. She was a skilled practitioner of the dark arts, and she believed that she could harness the power of the supernatural to enhance her own power and wealth. She practiced as a witch doctor, using the remains of the children she had killed to make remedies. She used everything she could from their bodies, including their fat, blood, hair, and bones, which she would then turn into powder. Enriqueta offered salves, ointments, filters, cataplasms and potions to treat tuberculosis and other diseases that had no cure at that time. 
wealthy people paid large sums of money for her remedies, unaware of their horrifying origin. They did not know she had used the bones, blood, and organs of her child victims in her rituals, and she had sold them potions and cures made from those very body parts. The people of Barcelona were terrified of Enriqueta, but she managed to evade capture for years, thanks to her connections to the criminal underworld and her reputation as a powerful witch. Despite this, her luck eventually ran out. Enriqueta's reign of terror came to an end in 1912, when she kidnapped her last victim, Teresita Guitart Congost. For two weeks, the city searched for the little girl. Public indignation grew as authorities appeared passive towards the missing children. Eventually, though, a suspicious neighbor found Teresita's trail. Enriqueta's flat at mezzanine number 29 of Potent Street became the focus of the investigation. When police entered her flat, there, they found Teresita, along with another girl named Angelita. After a statement was given, Teresita was returned to her parents. She explained to them how Enriqueta took her by the hand, promising her candies. But when she realized she was being taken too far from her home, Teresita became afraid. Enriqueta then cut her hair and changed her name to Felicidad, telling her she no longer had parents and was to call her stepmother from then on. Enriqueta fed Teresita potatoes and stale bread and was said to prefer to pinch her rather than to beat her. The girl was prohibited from looking out of the windows or even going onto the balconies, as well as several rooms within the flat. Angelita's declaration was even more terrifying. She claimed that before Teresita's arrival, there was a five-year-old boy named Pepito. Angelita secretly witnessed Enriqueta, who she had began calling Mom, kill Pepito on the kitchen table. At the time, Enriqueta did not realize that Angelita had just witnessed her committing the murder, and so Angelita ran to hide in her bed, where she pretended to sleep. Enriqueta claimed that Angelita was her daughter by her estranged husband, Juan Pujalo but Pujalo stated that he had not lived with her for many years, that they had not had children, and that he did not know where Angelita had came from. In the second inspection of the flat, detectives found the horror that Enriqueta Marti was hiding. There they found 50 pitchers, jars, and wash bowls containing preserved human remains. Investigators also found false walls within two other flats where Enriqueta had lived. Within the ceilings of those flats, they found even more human remains. Further investigation revealed housing in saint felu de Lobragat, property of Enriqueta's family, where they found remains of children in vases and jars, along with books of remedies. The police also uncovered several curious things within Enriqueta's flat including an ancient book with parchment covers, a book of notes where she had written recipes and potions in elegant calligraphy, a package of letters and notes written in a coded language, and a list with names of families and very important figures within Barcelona. Among the population, it was believed that this list was Enriqueta's rich client list. The public believed that the suspected clients would not have to pay for their crimes of pedophilia, or of even buying human remains from Enriqueta to treat their health because of their wealth and status. The police tried to stop the list from leaking, but rumors ran wild, and the information got out. Enriqueta's arrest sent shockwaves throughout the city, with many families wondering if their children were among her victims. As the police dug deeper into the case, they found that Enriqueta was not just a kidnapper and a murderer, but also a practicing witch doctor. Her potions and remedies, made from the remains of the children she had killed, were highly sought after by the wealthy and the elite. They were willing to pay top dollar for these cures, no matter what the cost. Enriqueta's double life had been shrouded in mystery and secrecy for many years, and the revelation of her true nature sent shockwaves throughout the town. How could someone who begged on the streets during the day and mingled with the wealthy and the powerful at night be capable of such heinous crimes? 
The public was absolutely outraged and demanded justice for the innocent children who had been taken from their families and who were never seen again. The authorities finally took action, and Enriqueta was arrested and put on trial for her crimes. Over the course of her trial, Enriqueta was linked to the disappearance of dozens of children from the Ravel district. She was accused of kidnapping, murder, and trafficking in human body parts. Her crimes were so gruesome and depraved that the people of Barcelona were shocked and appalled. It's presumed that she may have kidnapped a large number of children during her 20-year reign of terror, some of her victims including newborn babies. During her trial, Enriqueta remained defiant and unrepentant, claiming that her actions were necessary to protect her clients and their families from harm. But the evidence against her was overwhelming, and she was eventually found guilty and sentenced to death. Because of the limited evidence, though, forensic experts were only able to identify a dozen children who were likely Enriqueta's victims. Due to her haphazard record-keeping, it's difficult to determine if she was the deadliest killer in Spanish history. Nevertheless, it's clear that she terrorized the city of Barcelona for many years. The public grew increasingly fearful as children continued to vanish without a trace. Enriqueta was eventually convicted of her crimes and sentenced to death. However, she managed to cheat justice one last time. On May 12, 1913, Enriqueta was found dead in her cell, having apparently taken her own life by poisoning herself. The legacy of Enriqueta Marti continues to haunt Barcelona even to this day. Her crimes have since become the stuff of legend. Her name is synonymous with evil and depravity, and her story continues to fascinate as well as terrify true crime enthusiasts all around the globe. Her crimes were so shocking and brutal that they left an indelible mark on the city's psyche. Some people believe that her spirit still haunts the Raval district seeking revenge against those who wronged her in life. Others believe that her crimes were part of a larger conspiracy involving the rich and powerful within Barcelona, and that she was merely a pawn in a much larger game. Whatever the truth may be, though, the story of Enrique de Marti serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked power and the dark allure of the supernatural. The remains of her victims were never properly identified or even laid to rest, and their spirits are said to haunt the streets of Barcelona to this day. Some people claim to have seen the ghostly figures of children wandering the alleys and courtyards of El Raval, still searching for their long-lost families. Enrique de Marti may be gone, but her reign of terror will never be forgotten. Her story serves as a chilling reminder that evil can lurk in the most unexpected of places, and that sometimes, the most terrifying monsters are the ones who hide in plain sight. So that was the disturbing case of the notorious vampire of Barcelona, the Spanish serial killer, Enriqueta Marti. If you have any questions regarding it or any other cases I've previously covered, feel free to contact me at roguedarknesspod at gmail.com. You can also always reach me directly on my socials. Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube all have the same handle of at rogue underscore darkness. Be sure to share the podcast with anyone who you think would like it, and also leave a rating and review on Apple iTunes, Spotify, Good Pods, or anywhere else where you can leave a review to let other listeners know you enjoy the show. If you want some personalized shoutouts and other exclusives, definitely check out my Patreon by visiting patreon.com slash roguedarkness. You can also check out my bonfire shop if you want to get your hands on some awesome merch to help show your love for the show even further. And as always, all of the links for everything discussed in my episodes are down in the description box of the episode. And with that said, that concludes this week's episode of Rogue Darkness. The darkness is all around us, and I can confidently say that reality truly is more terrifying than fiction. Until next time. <laughs>